You without me is like hell Melvin without the blue note. She'll never go platinum. Platinum, 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 platinum. This group is regarded as one of the most influential soul and R&B groups to emerge in the 1970s. With their smooth, lush sound and Teddy Pendergrass compelling lead vocals that helped define the Philadelphia soul movement. Their output spanned from sweeping long proto disco dance numbers to smooth, smoldering ballads, all wrapped up in Gamble and Huff's beautifully crafted production. The centerpiece of today's video is all about Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes. Now before we start, let's be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and push that notification bell to be sure you won't miss out any more content. Now, without further ado, let's cue that intro. Harold Melvin was a self-taught pianist who started singing doo-wop as a teenager with a group called the Charlemagnes and released the first version of the Blue Notes in 1954. Melvin was the original Quintess lead singer for a time, lyricist, arranger, and choreographer. Strangely, he would mostly hand over those responsibilities by the time the group reached its peak success. The other original members included co-leader Bernard Williams, Roosevelt Brody, Jesse Gillis Jr., and Franklin Peeker. You know, the Blue Nose, like I said, existed in 1954. And, um, and, and Harold, I think Harold may have come along um, around the late 50s or 1960. Um, he became a member of the group. Um, when, when he signed with Gamblin' Huff, he couldn't use the name Blue Notes by itself because it was trademarked to another person. And so he came up with Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes. Uh, prior to that, it was uh, in the early 60s, it was the Blue Notes featuring Harold Melvin. Yeah. So when you see Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes featuring Teddy Pendergrass or Theodore Pendergrass, that, that's not the first time that that has happened. In 1956, the Blue Notes recorded their first song for Josie Records, If You Love Me, which became a regional hit. They recorded for numerous other labels during the next few years, most notably Dot Records, before gaining their first R&B chart hit with My Hero in 1960. Despite consistent recording activity, the group was in flux due to several personnel changes and Bernard Williams left to lead a spin-off group that he named the original Blue Notes in the mid-1960s. Melvin put together a new version of the Blue Notes based on lead singer John Atkins, who restored the group to the R&B charts in 1965 with the Landa hit, Get Out and Let Me Cry. Throughout the rest of the 1960s, additional releases on Art Dick, Checker and Unirickers occurred, as did more personnel changes. During the late 1960s, the group frequently traveled with the Cadillacs, whose young drummer Teddy Pendergrass would prove to be Melvin's most important discovery. Pendergrass began as a member of the Blue Notes backup band, but he showed such vocal talent that when John Atkins left in 1970, Melvin quickly promoted him to lead vocalist. This move helped them land a deal with Gamble and Huff's Philadelphia International label in 1972, just as the label was establishing itself as the new hub of soul music Pendergrass voice was comparable to that of Dell singer Marvin Jr., whom Gamble and Huff had extensively courted. With Gamble and Huff now providing high-quality material and production, Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes would become one of R&B's most popular groups in the coming years. Their self-titled debut largely contained tracks written in anticipation of signing Marvin Jr. Their self-titled debut largely contained tracks written in anticipation of signing Marvin Jr. The first single, I Miss You, was a hit on the R&B charts, but their second was a smash the legendary ballad, If You Don't Know Me By Now, featuring an agonizing, star-making vocal performance by Pendergrass. If You Don't Know Me By Now peaked at number one in RB and was their sole top five mainstream hit. This song was later covered by Simply Red for a number one smash in 1989. The Blue Note scored again in 1973 with the string-laden dance track, The Love I Lost, 
Credited by many observers as one of the first disco records, it was their second R&B chart topper and top 10 pop single. The accompanying album Black and Blue produced another R&B top 10 in a follow-up. Satisfaction guaranteed or take your love back. By this time, the Blue Notes consisted of Melvin, E. Pendergrass, bass vocalist Lawrence Brown, baritone vocalist Bernard Wilson, and tenor vocalist Lloyd Parks. Parks debuted on the album to be true, most notably on R&B chart topping songs like Where Are My Friends and Bad Luck. In 1972, Lloyd Parks was replaced by Jerry Cummings. The group continued their string of top 10 R&B hits and a new addition to the group. Female vocalist Sharon Page helped bring them back to the top of the R&B charts in 1975 with the duet, Hope That We Can Be Together Soon. Another excellent album followed later that year in Wake Up Everybody, whose title track was another R&B number one. Tell the world how I feel about Yay Baby. Also reached the R&B top 10. And the album Don't Leave Me This Way was later covered for a disco smash by Thelma Houston. However, tension was building within the group. The heavily spotlighted Pendergrass was hungry for separate billing, but Melvin, still the group's chief organizing force, turned them down. By 1975, Pendergrass and Harold Melvin were at odds, mainly over financial issues and personality conflicts. Despite the fact that Pendergrass sang most of the group's songs, Melvin was controlling the group's finances. At one point, Pendergrass wanted the group to be renamed Teddy Pendergrass in the Blue Notes because fans kept mistaking him for Melvin. By 1976, Teddy had had enough. He decided to run a test on Harold. He knew they were making money, and he would pay them peanuts. So uh, he said one day he went to the house, and he said, hey, man, you know, I need some money. And then Harold said, uh, I said, yo, T, you know, we don't have no money, man. We're broke, but let me see what I can do. He went back to his bedroom, and then my dad followed him. He looked through the keyhole, picked up the mattress, and he said it was stacks of money there. And he said he took a hundred bill off of one of the stacks, and he came out, and he's like, man, hey, this is what I can do. He said he gave him a hundred dollars. And my dad walked out the door that day. He said, I'm going on my own. In 1976, Pendergrass left the Blue Notes for a solo career that quickly made him one of R&B's top sex symbols. From there, the Blue Notes struggled with his replacements, and honestly, Blue Notes true fans would say when Teddy Pendergrass left the group, that was the ending for the group. Sharon Page helped fill his shoes on lead vocals, as well as new male lead David Ebo, whose sound was fairly similar to Pendergrass. However, Pendergrass' departure also signaled the end of the Blue Notes relationship with Philadelphia International. Their next recordings were for ABC, for whom they hit the R&B Top 10 1977 with the title Track Of. Reaching for the World It will prove to be their last major success, however, after one more album for ABC, they moved to MCA, subsidiary source in 1979 for two LPs that failed to reignite their commercial momentum. And Cummings and Wilson left in 1977 and were replaced by Dwight Johnson and William Spradley respectively, while Page and Ebo left in 1980. Melvin persisted, helming one final album of new material for Philly World in 1984. Title Talk It Up Tell Everybody. It was somewhat popular in the United Kingdom, but not enough to reestablish them. Melvin continued to tour with various Blue Notes lineups long into the 1990s and Page eventually rejoined the group. Melvin suffered a stroke and never fully recovered, passing on March 24th, 1997 at the age of 57. Lawrence Brown passed away of a respiratory disease on April 6, 2008 at the age of 63. Additionally, three previous members of the group passed away in 2010. First, Teddy Pendergrass passed away of respiratory failure on January 13, 2010, at the age of 59, after previously battling colon cancer. Six months later, on July 13, 2010, Roosevelt Brody, the original Blue No Second tenor, passed away of diabetes complications at the age of 75. 
Bernard Wilson passed away on December 26, 2010 at the age of 64 as a result of complications from a stroke and heart attack. Pendergrass predecessor John Atkins passed away from an aneurysm in 1998. David Ebo, who succeeded Pendergrass, passed away of bone cancer on November 30th, 1993 at the age of 43. Sharon Page's passing was reported on July 5th, 2020. Gil Saunders passed away on February 4th, 2021. The only Blue Note survivors are Lloyd Parks, Jerry Cummings, and Bobby Cook. Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes were inducted into the Vocal Group Hall of Fame in 2007. Other artists have re-recorded Harold Melvin of Blue Notes hits, including David Ruffin, Simply Red, Jimmy Somerville, Sybil, The Three Degrees, and John Legend. Now, before we go, I have a question for you all. What is your favorite song from Harold Melvin of Blue Notes? <laughs>